Uh, so a lot of people, you know, we talk about, um, uh, there was a book uh, written, um, uh, the, um, oh, now I'm, now I'm uh, forgetting the name, but, uh, but it, this book, claimed that that uh, lectins were the you know the the worst thing that people could eat and are responsible for pretty much every disease known to mankind and in fact when you cook foods you you pretty much eliminate lectins anyway uh and then um uh the other thing we can do is is to reduce phytates by soaking spreading fermenting and and leavening now my brain is going, remember that book, remember that book, and, and the author, Grundy. Um, yeah, the plant, the plant Paradox by, by Grundy, that's the book. So anyway, it's been a very much uh, proven uh, false uh, over and over again. I think Michael Greger has some excellent videos uh, explaining why this theory is wrong. So what I want you to notice here is that there are a number of plant foods that, that the digestibility is really high for. So, you know, white flour bread, it's about 96%, you've removed the fiber. Soy protein isolate, you've removed the fiber, it's around 95%. Peanut butter, it's, you know, you've ground those peanuts down, uh, so the fiber becomes, uh, you know, very small particle sizes, about 95%. Tofu, about 93% whole wheat flour or bread even, even though it's whole wheat, because it's been ground the flour into flour, the digestibility protein is about 92%. And, and those figures are really similar to the amount of protein we would get from animal products like, you know, meat or fish or, or dairy products or eggs. Um, and then, but, but you can see that for whole plant foods, uh, grains like oatmeal uh, is around 86% of the protein is digestible. Uh, lentils and most other legumes is, is, you know, lentils around 84. Other legumes range from about 72 to 89. Uh, of course, as I mentioned, using these, you know, the soaking and sprouting or, you know, and, and then cooking, you'll, you'll help to increase. And if you make hummus out of the legumes, <laughs> Um, you know, you make hummus, I should say, out of the legumes, uh, you're, again, breaking down those particles and increasing that protein digestibility. So moving on to protein quantity, uh, can we get enough protein uh, from plants? And the answer uh, is, is absolutely yes. Even the largest mammals on the planet managed to get enough protein from plants to build big muscles. Most of the largest mammals on the planet are vegetarians, like hippopotamuses and rhinoceroses and giraffes and elephants. And their muscles are huge and all without, uh, or essentially without animal products. So people, of course, are pretty puny by comparison, uh, but we can too. And if you you know, look up vegan athletes or vegan bodybuilders online, you'll see there are a lot of pretty buff, uh, muscular uh, vegans out there. So what, how much protein do we need? What is the RDA for protein? Well, in terms of grams per kilogram per day, we're looking at about uh, 1.5 uh, two grams per kilogram per day, per day for young infants and 1.2 for older infants. And then it's around one for children. It's, it's about 1.3, or I'm sorry, 1, 1.05 for toddlers, one to three years of age, and about 0.95 for, for children from four to 13 years of age. A little lower for teens, 0.85, and a little lower still for adults, 0.8. Now, pregnancy and lactation is an exception, 1.1 for pregnancy, 1.3 for lactation. And in terms of grams a day, how many grams a day does that mean? And of course, it's important to recognize that, that grams a day are, um, you know, uh, refer uh, or apply only to the specific reference body weight that showed in red on the on the left here. Um, and we would need to adjust those numbers for individuals who might weigh more or less 
than the reference of body weight. And, and again, um, uh, a kilogram is uh, 2.2 pounds. So in terms of grams per day, we're looking at around 10 grams for infants, 10 or, you know, somewhere nine to 11. Uh, for children, it's about 13 grams a day for, for toddlers, about 19 for four to eight year olds, about 34 for nine to 13 year olds. And then for uh, teens and adults, it, it ranges from about uh, 46 to 56 grams a day is, is what is uh, needed. A little higher during pregnancy and lactation, 63 to 75 grams a day. Now, I think it's really important to recognize that the RDA is, is, is the average daily level of intake that's sufficient to meet the nutrient requirements of nearly all healthy people, or 97 to 98% of healthy people. The RDA for protein is 25% higher than average biological requirements, which, you know, is essentially saying that that um, you know the RDA is more than adequate for the vast majority of people. Now there are some people who do have increased needs that we need to you know pay attention to a little more, and and these are potentially whole food plant based eaters, pregnant and lactating women, children, athletes, and seniors. So let's go through each of those. Whole food plant-based eaters, there, we don't have any separate RDA for people eating whole food plant-based diets, but fiber in plant cell walls reduces protein digestibility. So some experts suggest those who are eating high fiber whole food plant-based diets add 10% to the RDA to compensate for these losses. Whether or not this is really necessary is questionable. Some people probably don't need to do that because you know, they don't, you know, we all differ in our needs, but but this just really adds a, an insurance that you're getting enough on a whole food plant-based diet. Now, this wouldn't be necessary for people who regularly include low fiber foods like tofu and soy milk and plant-based meat alternatives, peanut butter, those kinds of foods. And it wouldn't be necessary for plant, sort of plant-based eaters who include some animal products like dairy and eggs in their diets. Now, pregnant and lactating women, their RDA is close to 50% higher than it is for non-pregnant, non-lactating women. The RDA is based on, and this is really important, the RDA is based on pre-pregnancy healthy body weight. It's not based on the pregnancy weight. So that's important because that would make a big difference in how much protein you're trying to get. People generally will gain you know, 25 or 30 pounds during pregnancy. Uh, so pregnancy is 1.1 gram per kilogram per day and 1.2 if you're a whole food plant-based eater and you're adding 10%. And for lactation, 1.3 and 1.4 if you're eating a whole food plant-based diet and wanting to add 10%. Now, there's another way of approximating protein requirements uh, for pregnant and lactating women, and that's to add just 25 grams of protein uh, per day. And, and again, if we add 10%, that would be about 28 grams for people eating whole food plant-based to non-pregnant protein requirements. Um, so, and, and we would double that for people expecting twins. So they would need an extra 50 grams or 55 grams for those uh, who are plant-based. Now for children, uh, children need higher amounts of protein per kilogram body weight and protein needs average, um, you know, if you recall about 13 for toddlers and 20 for 48 year olds and, and, and uh, 35 for nine to 13 year olds. But for children eating whole food plant-based diets, an adjustment beyond 10% for adults is often recommended. And, and what is, is, is typically suggested is about 30% for toddlers, 20% for four to eight year olds, and 15% for nine to 13 year olds. So if we, if we go back to, and, and of course, uh, as it was for adults, a smaller increase of maybe 10% or no increase at all for children who regularly include those lower fiber protein rich foods like soy milk, tofu, veggie meats and nut or seed butters. And, and for those sort of plant predominant children who regularly include uh, small amounts of animal products like eggs and dairy products. 
So getting back to, you know, looking at uh, how much that would, that would therefore mean, well, for um, uh, you can see the, the percentage increase here. So for one to three year olds, um, rather than 1.05 grams of protein uh, per kilogram per day, if we add 30%, it would be 1.37 grams of protein per kilogram per day. And then for four, for four to 13 year olds, it would be about 1.14. For teens, it would be almost one. And for adults, it'd be about 0 0.9, 0 0.88 or 0 0.9.